The Shiller PE ratio is a valuation metric used for equities. It is currently at 36.2 times for the S&P 500 and it has been this high three times before, each time preceding record-breaking crashes. Today, I will examine the indicator to find out whether or not it really is a cause for concern. The Shiller PE ratio was invented by Robert Shiller during the late 80s in response to two of the forefathers of value investing, Benjamin Graham and David Dodd, who argued that one-year earnings were too volatile to offer an accurate picture of a firm's true financial value. Robert Schiller used this idea to create the Schiller PE ratio, also known as the CAPE ratio. It's very similar to your basic price to earnings ratio, except the earnings represent a 10 year moving average that takes inflation into account. The main purpose of this being to reduce the effect of short term earnings fluctuations on the valuation metric, such that it would be more accurate in predicting longer term results. Okay, cool, so let's actually examine the chart, and immediately it seems fairly clear that the indicator is nearing into overvalued territory. Both times we've been this high up, the market has proceeded to fall 50 and 25% respectively within the next few years. Okay, so it doesn't look great on the surface, but let's take a deeper look into the data to see how bad of a sign it really is. In order to figure out the predictive power of the ratio, we'll be plotting returns of the S&P 500 against the ratio itself and see if any pattern emerges. If there is a correlation, we can use the R squared value to measure the predictive power of the indicator. Basically, the R squared value measures how well one variable will predict another, or in other words, how well the ratio predicts returns. Obviously, the indicator is meant to be used for long-term value investing, but uh, I'm just kind of curious. So let's see how well it predicts one-year returns. And it, it just sucks. Um, I want an R squared value of less than 0 0.5. You can pretty much just disregard it. All right, moving on to the five-year chart. And now we're starting to get into the sort of time frames that it's meant to be used for. But again, it paints a picture of pretty poor predictive power. It's certainly better this time, but I really wouldn't be paying too much attention to it over this time period. The indicator is really meant to be used as a long-term indicator, so let's actually look at it over a longer time period. And here it's starting to look pretty decent. There's a fairly clear trend that as the Schiller PE ratio increases, the predicted returns decrease. But again, it's not super strong, with an R-squared value below 0.3. We can also clearly see the three year period around 2000, where the S&P really struggled to make positive returns over the next 10 years. All right, so let's have a look at the 15 year chart. And quite predictably, this one's the best of the lot with an R squared value of 0.37. It shows a pretty clear relationship between the ratio and the returns on the index. The correlation really isn't strong enough for us to use the trend line to predict results. But if we plot today's level on the chart, we do see an area of data points that all point towards pretty poor returns over the next 15 years. So what can we take away from this? Well, first of all, I really wouldn't use it as a way to predict an oncoming crash. It's fairly clear that it's at best unreliable as an indicator over short time periods. Over longer time periods, it's a slightly different story. It's still far from accurate, but there's a clear relationship and it indicates that there may be some serious risk for people intending to just buy and hold over the next 10 to 15 years. If I had to predict purely based off the PE ratio, which I wouldn't recommend, I would predict a 1.5% annualized return with maybe a 1.5 or 2% standard deviation. And just to be clear again, you should just not do that. Never make predictions based off just one indicator. Yeah, so in conclusion, it's definitely a negative signal, but at least just based off this, I wouldn't immediately go and short the S&P and go long adult diapers. So yeah, um, there will be links to my graphs and the data sources in the description below. Thank you and have a nice day.